the Lord's love. He told us to love your enemy, what you mean by that. Not your friend, not your relative. No, love your enemy. Otherwise, you are not a Christian. No matter what you are going to do to God. Now, some are helping the Old Testament. The Old Testament, we believe in. Because we are Jews in our foundation. Each one of us is a Jew. So what happened is, when the Lord came, we followed him. And that is the difference between us and the Jews. They did not believe in Jesus, but we did. And that's make us following the teaching of Jesus. When Jesus was being accused, you came and you changed the law. Yes, there was a law before killing and butchering and all that. But the Lord came and said, no more. No more. So, if you are a true Christian, that you say that you are a true Christian, that's when you fill up your heart to love. And your attitude to be loved. This guy who came over here, he was preaching. He had in the Bible in his hand a magic. And he jumped because they considered that as idol. So this is the way. It's suppose it's an idol. Let's put it this way. I agree with you, it's an idol. But it doesn't give you the right to put it down. The Lord did not say that to you. Friends, I want to begin with a, uh, some words from Pope, uh, the late Pope Benedict XVI, right, in his uh, audience with some German pilgrims visiting him, he said uh, some words that I think are very applicable for us, especially as we're reflecting today on the sufferings of our Lord. And he said to those German pilgrims, Christ did not promise an easy life. Those who desire comforts have dialed the wrong number. Rather, he shows us the way to great things, the good towards an authentic human life. The ways of the Lord are not easy, but we were not created for an easy life, but for great things, for goodness. And that's a very good reminder for all of us friends, especially as today we're going to go to our stage of the cross. We're here at the church of the flagellation where Jesus was scourged, right? The other day, like the suffering even started already at the Garden of Gethsemane on how the Lord really was anxious about what's going to happen, right? And then we went to Peter Galicanto, his friends, even Peter. His good friend Peter even denied him and abandoned him, right, betrayed him. And now we're here, and later on as we do the way of the cross, we're going to reflect all about suffering today. And I, and I really thought this is a good reminder from Luke 10 and 16, because why? A lot of us, I think, especially us who are already in this, in this very convenient age, right, where there's a lot of comfort in our life. Especially for us who's living in the United States. Everything is so convenient, right? And we're so used to comfort and convenience that really there is no more value for suffering in our world, right? We don't, like, think about suffering and we put zero value on suffering, right? And I think that's a big problem because if we really see no, no, no value in suffering, and we want to avoid suffering at all costs, right, friends? Not that we don't have to avoid suffering, right? Not that you're just going to go start looking, you know, for places where you can suffer and opportunities for you to suffer. No, that's not what I'm saying. But, you know, we find no value of suffering anymore. Like, we want to avoid it at all costs, right? If you think about 
some of the biggest, let's go to the most of the biggest and most controversial uh, problems of our world, right? Like, for example, the issue of abortion, right? You don't want to suffer, someone doesn't want to suffer raising kids anymore, and you know, the inconvenience that will take, right? right? What will happen to my body, it's dangerous, and all those arguments, for example, that are, you know, how about my quality of life, or, you know, it, it, people are afraid of suffering. We go on to right the issue of euthanasia here. Like older people, true, they're suffering. But then there's no more, again, there's no value for suffering. So you know what? Not let it suffer. Not suffering is more important than the dignity of human life, for example. That's just the, the, the extreme things. Daily life, for example, right? I don't want to suffer telling the truth. Because you know, telling the truth sometimes is inconvenient, right? So let me lie, right? To escape the suffering of telling the truth, right? Or people who steal, I don't want to work, or I, I want to get easy bucks. Then let me cheat, right? Or let me steal to escape that suffering. Or whatever it is, sufferings that the Lord had showed us. But again, as Pope Benedict reminded us today, the Lord had not showed us like an easy life. Right? He said, those who desire comforts have dialed the wrong number. And I think, right, for us Christians, the easier, the quicker for us to realize this, especially we live in a world where suffering exists because there's you know, people who abuse their freedom, and then, you know, suffering, suffering becomes unavoidable. But never in our gospel, right, have our Lord said, right, Go escape suffering, or you know what? Go and you know go and find an easy life. Never, always and always. What did our Lord say? Pick up your cross, right, and follow Him. Denying yourself and following. In fact, right, even more than the words, the example that He showed, right? The Lord suffered all of this: about physical abandonment, pains all forms of sufferings that he can endure so that he can show humanity, right, that he is with us in the suffering. That in whatever suffering, you know, we're, we're at, especially if it's an unavoidable suffering, we don't have to escape it, you know, at all costs. It's taking our, our lives, our, our eternal souls because of it. But what we need to do is unite our sufferings with our Lord. Unite our sufferings with the sufferings of our Lord, because truly suffering, right, united in his suffering, can save, can give grace to people. Just as his suffering and death, his passion and death on the cross, but always it has provided us the salvation that we need. And so, friends, today as we start our stations of the cross later on, and I like, you know, I don't like it. But you know, I you know, I, I see the wisdom of the Lord that we're starting with that inconvenient way. I think that's the most that we've walked in the rain so far. And it's not convenient, you know. But you know, we're suffering in a, in a way. I don't know if it's still raining outside, but if that's the case, so yeah, you know, it's, I think it's a good reminder for all of us to to really offer all of our sufferings again to God. And so friends, whatever your suf suffering right now, whatever you're bringing with you here in the Holy Land, unite it with our Lord and offer it to your families, offer it for yourself, so that all of us can truly receive the salvific grace of our Lord. Amen. Amen.